Akhenaten and the Elongated Skulls of the Ancients. This is a shortened version of my normal PowerPoint presentation. This is my book about um, the Elongated Skulls of Peru and Bolivia, our book about cranial deformation, my book about Akhenaten, and my latest book about the Paracas of the coast of Peru, dedicated to Senior Juan Navarro. Here's Senior Juan with elongated skull baby with red hair. This is typical cranial deformation techniques. These are people who had cranial deformation in the past. And again, other forms of altering the shape of a human skull. And here again, notice the one on the left, it's different. So um, elongated skulls have been found in many locations around the world. And uh, the work regarding Akhenaten comes from these two experts. Akhenaten was called the heretic pharaoh because he did many things in his time that were regarded as being bad. We know that his bloodline comes from Amenhotep III, and he was born as Amenhotep IV, but changed his name to Akhenaten. Some people think that he suffered from this disease called Marfan syndrome, and this is the symbol that he used to represent the one deity, the Aten. His history was erased, or they tried to erase his history, because of other things. He moved the capital from Thebes to his new place called Amarna, or Akhetaten. And this is what it looks like today. It was completely obliterated after he was murdered. All that remains are these pillars, which are made of fiberglass. And that is Stephen Mailer, who is my expert about Akhenaten. Now, Akhenaten actually chose a megalithic site. He didn't choose virgin territory. And we know this because we actually went inside a, a cavernous system carved into the bedrock, which clearly is pre-dynastic. And here we have his children represented with elongated heads. And some sculptures of his daughters also with elongated heads. So did they actually look like this? Their skeletons have never been found. Tutankhamun did have a slightly elongated head. And again, this is the sarcophagus of Akhenaten that was completely destroyed. Now in Peru, there are many different shapes and sizes of elongated heads, and they're found along this line called the Capagnan. It's also known as the Path of Viracocha, so we'll be exploring along this line. Into the northern part of Chile is where we find the Chinchorro people, and they had elongated heads more than 5,000 years ago. Notice the very elongated look. Next, we move up to um, a, volcano, a volcano in Bolivia, and here we find skeletons with slightly elongated heads, like this. That is cranial deformation. Next, we're at Cerro de Potosí, and here again, elongated skulls have been found dating back around 3,000 years. And then the Wankarani culture, again about 3,000 years ago, extremely elongated heads. Next, we're going to Tiwanaku and Pumapunku. And this is a very elongated head that probably dates back about 2,000 years. And now the Island of the Sun in Lake Titicaca. And again, probable cranial deformation. But this is a baby, and notice extreme elongation of the skull. Now we're at Silustani, which is near Lake Titicaca. And again, we find examples of cranial deformation. And here, this is closer to, uh, into the highlands of Peru. And this is Waiki. Look, the skull is the size of the torso. Very anomalous. And uh, the, for, the uh, fontanelle is not quite closed on Waiki, indicating possibly that she died at two years old, but look at the tooth development. These are molars. Babies do not have molars. And in the same ancient cemetery, this individual was found. 
In the area of Cusco, we see elongated skulls, possibly of the Inca, but look at the size of this baby skull, maybe one year old. Now we're at Oyente Tambo, and at the quarry of Oyente Tambo, we find some extremely elongated skulls like the one on the right. Continuing along the path of Viracocha, again, another baby with quite an extremely elongated skull. And here, at the site called Wadi, again, other examples of elongated skulls and also ancient surgery. And this is uh, at Waitara. And this is where we first encountered the Paracas culture. Look at the size of the skull compared to the body. It's absolutely huge. This can't be simple cranial deformation. And the classic examples of the Paracas are shown here. We have a number of them in our small museum in Paracas, Peru. And this is where Paracas is located south of Lima. Now, the Paracas people were probably maritime people because Totora reed uh, is present on the coast of Peru, and these spondylus shells come from Ecuador. This is the famous candelabro, and here is likely a natural elongated skull of the Paracas people. This, on the other hand, could be um, uh, head binding. This is definitely an example of head binding. But what do we have here? Look at the complexity of the shape of this skull. And this is that skull compared to a normal human skull. We have these suture lines in our skull, all Homo sapiens do, but here the Paracas are missing one of the sutures. That medically is supposedly impossible. We also have these holes called fontanelles, or foramen, sorry. The elongated skulls have the holes in the backs of their skulls. And here where the arrow is pointing, that's where your muscles attach to your neck. And in the Paracas, they're extremely larger. And this hole, which is the foramen magnum, is in the center of the skull. But in the Paracas, it's significantly farther back. And this shows you the difference between a normal skull on the right and the Paracas ones on the left. Again. Notice the shape of the foramen magnum and the normal skull compared to the Paracas. So in terms of blood groups too, the Paracas are different than normal Native American people of the coast of Peru. And they were responsible for much of the Nazca system, including the astronaut. These are in the area of Palpa in Peru, where there are more than 1,000 geoglyphs. The Paracas also had a ceremonial city called Cahawachi, where we find these so-called trophy skulls. And this is an effigy of an elongated skull of the Paracas. And this is a classic Paracas with the natural dark red hair. Notice the size of the baby skull on the right compared to a normal human baby on the left. Their god was called Khan, who is shown having red hair. And we see multiple examples of skulls from that time period with red hair which is quite intriguing and is not the result of bleaching. That is, even in some cases, we have blonde hair. So all Native American people in general are supposed to be of haplogroups A, B, C, and D, but this baby Paracas was tested, and it's, it was not of haplogroup A, B, C, or D. It, in fact, was U2E1, another is T2, And with this one, it is H1, that is Eurasian DNA. And again, the one on the left was tested, and it was H2A, which seems to come from the Black and Caspian Sea. These are the results of the main DNA testing that was done, and only two of the 18 skulls showed to be Native American in terms of uh, its genetics or their genetics. But in the Black Sea, we also find skulls that look remarkably like the Paracas of the coast of Peru. The largest elongated skulls in the world are found in Paracas and also in the area of the Black Sea and Crimea, like this baby. 
So is it possible that they navigated from the Black Sea and somehow found their way onto the coast of Peru? That is what we are presently researching. And these are other examples of anomalous skulls and skeletons found in the Peru-Bolivia area. And this is a huge newborn baby, Paracas, with elongated, uh, with red hair. This is a, a man who's presently living in Spain. And these are the so-called mummies, uh, Nazca mummies, that have been proven to be completely fake. That's unfortunate, but it's true. They're simply different bones and body parts added from different human beings, and in some cases, human beings and animals. And I'd like to thank uh, Marcia K. Moore, who has brought the ancient Paracas people back to life. Here is her reconstruction of what is called the cinnamon skull. She is a fine artist, and she's done all of this work for us for free. So this is the first glimpse of an ancient people who lived 2,000 to 3,000 years ago and disappeared when the so-called Nazca people arrived on the coast of Peru.